Hi, I'm Dr. Patrick Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. And uh, I just wanted to introduce you to something that we've put together here. Uh, through, through the Homegrown Herbalist School and, and the website Homegrown Herbalist Net, we have a lot of, you know, kits that we offer. We have, you know, herb kits and, and uh, travel kits and little first aid kits and wound and suture kits, you know, that are pretty involved. Um, but uh, we've had sort of a an area that we haven't addressed. We do a lot of wound care teaching. Uh, because of my background as a veterinarian and an herbalist, I've had the opportunity to treat a lot of wounds uh, using herbal medicine. Um, and there's a few things that I always use uh, that I thought it would be handy for somebody like you to have with them. And so we've put together this little kit and it's really small and really portable. You know, you can take that about anywhere. Uh, and it has everything that you would need that I would use uh, to, to manage a wound. And so let me just show you what we have in here. So it comes in this little handy zippered case and uh, everything you need is, is right here. And what it has is there's three tinctures. And there's three powders. Oops. They're tippy little rascals. And I have no idea which way is up or down. <laughs> Looks like they're up. So there's three tinctures and three powders that are kind of the foundation for the kit. And the first of those is uh, a bleeding tincture. And this is a combination of three herbs, um, yarrow, shepherd's purse, and bugleweed, that are really excellent to stop bleeding. And so we have a, a tincture form of that for internal use. And we also have a powder form for topical use. Okay, so, so I have used this powder and this tincture for years uh, in my practice, both as a veterinarian and as a naturopath. Um, and I use the powder topically to stop bleeding. And then I use the tincture internally for, for internal bleeding or also if you have serious uh, wound bleeding. So that's, that's the first one. The next one we have is a formula that I put together years ago called Venom and Sting. And this is a formula that I use on venomous bites like uh, rattlesnakes, um, any of the copperheads, rattlesnakes, uh, water moccasins, any of the pit vipers. Uh, although I've also used it on other kinds of venom, uh, you know, black widows and some other species uh, with good success too. But uh, again, we have that one both in a tincture for internal use and in a powder for, uh, look, that's the wrong powder. <laughs> a powder for topical use, okay? And so what you would do with this powder, in this case, instead of using the dry powder, like you would with the venom and sting to stop bleeding, um, you would actually mix this with a little water and make a poultice and put that on that venomous bite. So the tincture you would use internally, um, and then the powder you would make into a poultice by just adding a little bit of water and mix the water and the powder and you put that on that venomous bite. And I've used this formula for years uh, in the veterinary practice and in the naturopath practice uh, for rattlesnake bites. Um, we don't have copperheads and water moccasins in this area, but it's the same venom. I've used it for hobo spider bites a lot, brown recluse spider bites. And uh, in my experience, uh, wherever I start this formula internally and topically, that's where the tissue, tissue destruction from that bite stops. And, and so it's, it's very effective. So you've got that one, the venom and sting formula. And then uh, the last one is the poultice formula. And uh, of course, you know, poultices are usually topical applications, right? You make, you take your plants and you mix them with a little water and you put them on topically. And, and that's what the powder is for. And we've used that for years too. If you want to see some really remarkable cases, go to homegrownherbalist.net and, and look at the blog articles on some of those wound cases that we've done with, with poultices. Um, but more recently, uh, I've kind of changed gears on that. And what I'm doing a lot these days is I'm actually using uh, that same formula in the form of a tincture. And I'm mixing um, a teaspoon of the tincture with four ounces of water and using that as a wound spray. And I have found it to be every bit as effective for 
healing up those wounds. And the wound healing that, that I've experienced over the years, over the decades with this formula is really remarkable. Again, go to homegrownherbalist.net and check out the blog. Uh, so anyway, you have the powder and you can make a powdered poultice. And why would you use the, the powdered poultices instead of the spray? Well, I still use poultices for cases where I want to draw stuff out of a wound, right? So if there's a lot of infection or if there's a lot of swelling and pus, I'll use the poultice to pull stuff out. Um, otherwise, I'm using the spray. And uh, we've made it really easy to do that. So what we have is uh, we have the tincture, of course, but we also have included in the kit a little spray bottle, okay, so that you can make that wound spray. And what you do is we've also included some sterile water. Okay, see there, these are little little bottles of sterile water, sterile water. And so what you do is you put the bottle of water into the little spray container, and then you put the tincture in, and there's complete instructions on how much of which and how to do all that. And then you make that tincture spray. And so uh, then you've got the wound spray for, for those wounds. So there's enough water here to, to make four of those. And of course you got the little spray bottle. So that's handy. Um, also, we've included some of these little rascals. And these are not breath mints, don't suck on these, okay? But what they are, are little towelettes, okay? So <laughs> if you get those uh, wet at all, if you put a little bit of water on those, they'll instantly expand into a nice little handkerchief sized towelette that you can use to, to clean the wound or, or do whatever you might need to do, clean yourself before you deal with the wound. Anyway, there's, there's a handful of those in the kit. And uh, And then there's one last thing, and this is the neatest thing of all, and that is um, these are little duct tape suture kits. And this is a technique that I've been using uh, and teaching here for just a little while, um, but we've seen some remarkable results. We've done some really neat uh, wounds with this technique. Uh, I think personally, as a surgeon, as a guy that can sew stuff up, I think this is actually more effective for a lot of wound types. Um, and if I didn't have a big piece of paper on my wall that I paid a lot of money for that said I could sew people up, this would, this would be what I'd be doing. And so, in fact, I don't have one for people. I have one for dogs. So I don't sew people up. I do this. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is just a really remarkable little, uh, little kit. And there's full instructions on how to use that to, to create a beautiful wound closure. Um, and there's, you know, videos on that and, and uh, you know, instructions on how to do that. But, and there's several of those kits in here, a couple of them anyway. So we have two of the duct tape suture kits. So you could do either two, you know, wounds, or you could do one really long wound uh, with that. And of course, there's complete instructions for everything. And so, um, even if somebody knew nothing about any of this, they could take this kit, they could pull out the card and say, okay, what do I do? And you would have very clear uh, directions that I've written up here for you. So that's all included. And again, it all fits into this clever little carry case and uh, just very convenient. So I hope, uh, I hope that's useful to you. I think, I think this is something everybody ought to have with them uh, for managing lacerations and uh, hope that you enjoy it. I'm Dr. Patrick Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine, and thanks for listening.